Okay, so again, here we have our scattering geometry. And um, so again, the assumptions that we're going to make in this derivation are that, as we already mentioned, the alpha particles and the gold nuclei interact via Coulomb repulsion interaction only. So we, um, we don't uh, consider any um, gravity or any other effects. Okay. Um, we assume that the alpha particle and the, and the nucleus are both point-like at this point. They had no idea, right? Before this experiment, they didn't, hadn't even conceived of a nucleus, and they had no idea how big the nucleus might be. So we basically consider them point-like. Um, and as long as, um, I mean, and, and this is a reasonable assumption because they are very, very small. Uh, we can neglect relativistic effects because the, um, the uh, velocity of the alpha particle, this should be, should be like V alpha. Um, the velocity of the alpha particle is always much smaller than the speed of light, okay, in the Rutherford experiment. So we can, this is a classical Rutherford scattering uh, calculation that we're going to be doing. Um, we also assume that since the, then since the, the gold foil, um, that the alpha beam is, is, um, hitting is very thin, we, um, we make the assumption that, that each alpha particle interacts with at most, uh, one nucleus. It might not interact with any nucleus, but it interacts with, uh, at most one nucleus because it's thin enough that, um, that the probability of interacting with any nucleus is relatively low. Okay. And finally, we assume that the mass of the alpha particle is much, much smaller than the mass of the nucleus. And in reality, it's about 50 times smaller. Uh, and so uh, we can assume that the, that the gold particle remains at rest uh, during the entire interaction and the alpha particle. So we don't have to basically re uh, consider the recoil of the gold particle is all. Okay, it's usually good to kind of, before you develop the mathematical model for this scattering process, it should, it's good if we um, think about the physics in a general way and kind of uh, predict what we'd, uh, what we kind of get in a qualitative sense, okay? And so, uh, and, and, and these qualitative um, I guess predictions should be borne out by the mathematical model that we develop. Okay, so the first thing is that um, we should we should realize that the particle will scatter over a larger angle theta uh, if a number of things happen. For example, if the impact parameter b is smaller, if the particle comes in initially closer on a closer line to the to the uh, scattering center then it's going to feel a larger Coulomb repulsion and so it'll scatter to a larger angle, okay? Uh, also, if the, if the uh, initial, if the alpha particle comes in with an uh, uh, initially slower, with a smaller initial velocity, then the Coulomb interaction acts over a longer period of time and so it should also be deflected by a larger, a larger angle. Um, in a general way, if we think about this as a, just a general scattering problem, not necessarily as just an scattering problem of alpha particles for which we know um, the mass and the atomic number and gold again which for which we know the mass and atomic number then we we would also have to say that in a general way if the atomic number of either the incoming particle or the target particle the scattering center is larger then we would expect scattering over a larger angle because the uh, Coulomb interaction will be stronger uh, charges are larger and finally um, also, if the mass of the incoming particle, if it's not an alpha particle, but if it's some other particle, but it, uh, if the mass of that particle is smaller, um, the smaller it is, the more it will be deflected because, again, it has a particular Coulomb force uh, acting upon it, and it has, if it has a smaller mass, that means the acceleration is going to be larger. Also, we realize that this three-dimensional scattering problem reduces to two dimensions because the trajectory of each scattered particle lies in a particular plane, and every particle with a particular scattering parameter or uh, uh, um, impact parameter B has the same trajectory within their respective scattering planes. And finally, energy is conserved. As the particle approaches, the kinetic energy decreases and the potential energy increases, and this is reversed when the particle is receding.